Okay, everyone. Now we're going to take a look at how um, how the ocean affects our climate. Not just currents, but now there's other ways. Now let's start this off with a sort of a sort of a um, a question just to give you something to think about. And I have that question down here in the South Pacific Ocean. I wrote, "Would you rather jump in the ocean on a 70 degree day in October, or?" on a 70 degree day in April. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the difference? Both days are 70 degrees. What difference does it make which day, an April day or an October day that I jump into the ocean? Well, to help us answer that question, I just want to give you a little quick do now task. Please take a look at the cover of your earth science reference table and locate which substance has the greatest or highest specific heat. Now, there is a table there, specific heat of common substances. Which one has the highest specific heat? Pause the video for a second. Okay, so you've looked it over, and hopefully you found that the substance with the highest specific heat is liquid water. And you'll notice that liquid water has a significantly higher specific heat than anything else on that chart. More than granite, more than iron, more than copper, more than basalt. Now, what does that mean about water? What it means is that water is the hardest substance to heat up. It'll take the longest time to heat up, and therefore, it'll take the longest time to cool down. Now, imagine you have all those substances in that table. Water, iron, copper, lead, basalt, granite, and you're subjecting them all to the exact same amount of heat. Well, lead temperature would rise the fastest, and water's temperature would rise the slowest by far. So it's very, very hard to get water warmer. The temperature rises very slowly, and it requires a lot of heat to make the temperature rise. And remember, if it heats up slowly, it also cools down slowly. So now, let's go back to the question we started all this off with. Would you rather jump in the ocean on a 70 degree day in October or a 70 degree day in April? Well, let's think about that now. If you jump into that ocean in April, well, that water is going to be pretty darn cold because it's been cold all winter and it hasn't had much of a chance to heat up. And remember, even though it's 70 degrees out, the ocean still hasn't heated up because it takes a lot of heat. To make that temperature rise. Now let's take a look at what happens if you jump into the ocean in October. If you jump into that ocean in October, well, that ocean is still holding a lot of that heat from the summer because it takes a long time to cool down because it has such a high specific heat. So basically in April, the ocean hasn't warmed up yet. And in October, it hasn't cooled down yet. Now that's going to affect our climate. So let's think about this. Let's go up to the top to our paragraph here and let's fill in some missing items and see if we can make sense of this. All right, it reads as follows. Land and sea locations have different temperature ranges. Since land gains and loses heat so much faster than, does, than water does, inland areas tend to have warmer summers and cooler winters. Now, we were going to call that a continental climate. And that means that it has a greater temperature range. Okay, so the you know, temperature bounces around more in there. Now, by the ocean, let's think of what's happening. By the ocean, remember, in the summertime, that water is still heating up. It still takes a while. It hasn't heated up yet. So that's going to cause the summer to be a little cooler by the coast. And then in the winter time, the ocean is still holding some of the summer's heat. So the winters are actually going to be a little warmer by that ocean. Now we're going to call that a maritime climate. That's a word you've heard before. And that means that it has a smaller temperature range. Okay? <clears throat> okay. So now, based on what we've just learned, let's take a look at the bottom here. And we have location X and we have location Y. Location X is in the center of the continent. Location Y is located by the coast. 
So let's take a second and classify both of these with this, these two points down below. Location X has what kind of climate and what kind of temperature range? Location Y, what type of climate and what type of temperature range? Pause the video, fill those in, this will count. Okay, so now that you've done that, let's see how, what you got. Now location X in the center, that's what we're gonna call a continental climate. Excuse the stubborn eraser here. And because you don't have an ocean nearby, you're gonna have a greater temperature range, which means colder winters and warmer summers. Temperature has greater extremes in here. So location Y, well, that's by the ocean. It's going to have a maritime climate, which means it's going to have a smaller temperature range, which means warmer winters, cooler summers, because that ocean is kind of preventing the nearby land from reaching extreme temperatures. It's kind of moderating the extreme, the temperature of the land nearby keeping it from bouncing around too much. Now, one more point about this. This is not just yearly temperature range. This is also daily temperature range. So these inland locations also have hotter days and cooler nights. It's also a daily thing too. Now let's take a look down below and let's express these in relationships on graphs like we've been doing all year. First, temperature range versus distance from the ocean. Take a second, put your line in, we'll see if you get it right. Okay, well, as distance from the ocean increases, your temperature range increases. Now let's take a look at something a little more challenging. This will make us think a little bit more. Let's take a look here at the year, the whole year, January to December. All right, so what's temperature doing? I'm going to start by giving you the temperature pattern, the temperature curve, which is half of a climate graph that we learned, for location X. So let's say that this is the temperature curve for location X. That's location X's temperature curve. Highest temperatures in July and August coolest temperatures in January and December, typical Northern Hemisphere type of pattern. Now, what I would like you to do right now, since I've given you the temperature pattern of location X, what I would like you to do, maybe perhaps draw this with a, uh, col a colored pencil or a dotted line. I'd like you to draw right over this graph, right on here, the line representing the temperature curve of location Y for the year. How would location Y's temperature changes differ from X? So please pause the video if you must and draw your temperature curve for location Y. Okay, let's see if you got it right. Location Y by the ocean is going to have warmer winters, and it's gonna have cooler summers. So now I will connect. So the line, excuse my lack of dexterity working with a mouse, very cumbersome. Okay, so there's gonna be the temperature curve for location Y. It lacks the extremes that X has. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. So the basic rule, the farther from the ocean you go, the greater your temperature extremes become, okay? And the closer to the ocean you go, the more steady your temperature, both yearly and daily, becomes. Okay, um, hopefully um, everyone gets it and it's making pretty good sense. Um, and uh, more videos to follow, okay? Um, and again, thanks to the original author of these diagrams, Dave Mills. I want to cite him for that. And um, have a great night.